right, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for Ford's Critical Conversation. Uh, we like to say thank you to our uh, generous sponsors, the Ford Motor Company Fund. And um, thank you to all of the um, adult facilitators, adult note takers who are joining us here today, um, prioritizing this conversation with youth. Uh, thank you to all the youth who are joining us today and uh, for committing to um, make your community a better place. Uh, we want you to know that this conversation is for you. It is to amplify your voice. Uh, we know you've had experiences. We know you have ideas. Um, and we know that um, you are our future. So we want to hear from you. And um, we want you to be able to ask questions and, and feel comfortable when it comes to um, what are the, uh, how does police uh, interactions, what's taking place in our community? Um, uh, what is it that you want to see from, from police officers as, as they um, serve, as they protect and serve in the community? Um, what has been your experience and, and how can we make it better? I would like to welcome my co-host, uh, Mr. Norwood, Marcus Norwood to the call. Hello. Hey everybody, um, again, thanks to everybody that's watching on our live stream on Facebook, uh, I think we're on YouTube or wherever it is. Wherever you are in the city or in the world, we want to say thank you to all. And of course, thank you to our students for tuning in. We know you guys have been in school all day and you've been studying, been sitting behind a desk. So this really means a lot. You really, really have the, um, we really appreciate you taking this opportunity for your voice to be heard because you are not only our future, you are our present. So what you say matters. So thank you for tuning in with us. We're really, really happy to have you here today. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So today we have a really cool conversation in store for you. And it is, what are the roles of police? Um, so we're gonna get into that. Um, and before we do that though, um, we wanna just go through and do a little uh, survey for our kids. Um, we wanna get um, just understanding of, of where you are, what your thoughts are before we start the conversations. Um, so we're gonna share that survey link in the chat and we're gonna um, play a little bit of music to keep us going in the meantime while you're completing those surveys. So um, if we can please go ahead and add that survey to the chat and cue some survey thinking music for our kids. Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar, there's a chat window or a chat icon. You can just click on that and that chat will show up and then you'll be able to read uh, some of the comments and you can click on the link to go ahead and do that survey. Shouldn't take but a couple of seconds. What is it, Maria, a couple of questions maybe? Yeah, we just have a few questions, about a one page, um, quick, easy. Uh, I see the survey link is in the chat now, so thank you. So now all you need to go is, uh, all you need to do is go to the chat and you can get to that if you're on a computer by hovering down at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a lot of little icons and one will have a chat bubble and it'll say chat underneath. And you can click on that and begin your survey. And meanwhile, uh, we are going to cue our survey music. I'm excited about the um, question, the, the discussions for today. I'm really excited because um, I have no idea what the answers are going to come back as. Uh, and it, it, I think it's going to make for a great discussion regardless of what the answers come back. And it's good that the students can a, um, honestly answer uh, because we don't want them to hold back their, their true feelings. Now's the time to go ahead and, and say how you really feel. So I'm really excited uh, to, to know what they're thinking right now. I know I didn't get a chance to necessarily have this opportunity when I was growing up being in school. Uh, well, I didn't get to ask my opinion a whole lot. You were just kind of told what to do and you just kind of did it, you know? And so now things are changing. I, I like that uh, because students are smart. I tell you that they know more about technology and what's going on in the world because of social media. And um, they're, they're just so smart and they have a lot yeah, to they offer. Are. <laughs> They're super smart. And so I know you guys, I'm hoping that you all are already taking the survey. Um, if you're done, you can go ahead and write in the chat that you're done. 
But while you're finishing that up, I want to uh, welcome our CEO, Robert Jamerson. And he has a, a few remarks. I know this is our second um, session of Critical Conversations. We did one last year and um, it was fantastic. And we're excited to be able to bring it back this year mm -hmm. again. Um, but want to just welcome him so he can address uh, the group and, and have share a few words. Hello, everyone. Just excited to um, to see you here. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here. Um, it is all about you today. Uh, you are so important. We want you to know um, our mission is all around helping you find your greatness. Uh, this is where we're able to hear your voice. Um, all your comments matter because we want to be able to provide the resources, have the exchanges that help you to be your best self. And also, you're going to help each of us uh, from officers to uh, mentors to be better, right? We're hoping to learn from you as well as have these exchanges that help to shape how we look at things, right? And so with that, um, I'm excited because I've got my notepad ready to be able to write down some notes and to be able to take some things that I observed today to be able to help others uh, in the community do well, but more importantly, help me to be a better person. So with that, um, you're in for a treat. Please put your comments in. Please go through the surveys and please let your voice be heard because you matter. Um, and if no one's told you this today or any other time, we love you. We truly um, are excited for what you're going to be and who you are right now. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to the fabulous team of Motoria and Corporal Norwood. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, we appreciate your support and uh, are excited about these conversations with you. So let's see, we want to um, first do a quick overview of our great model. Robert alluded to it, our mission um, of helping you find their greatness. Um, <clears throat> we just want a quick overview. We can uh, cue that slide. But we know that kids get a lot of skill sets from playing sports. And through our research of Harvard and others, um, we've seen that um, some of those skill sets they get are um, goal setting, resilience, embracing a healthy lifestyle, accountability, and uh, teamwork. And so um, we want to make sure that kids understand uh, how those skill sets are, understand that they have them, number one, and then two, how they're transferred, transferable at home, at school, in their future careers, and um, in anything that they do. And along with that, we want to give, at Detroit PAL, um, we want to give kids positive exposures uh, to police officers. Uh, so that's what we do. If you come to a Detroit PAL program, that's what you're going to get. Um, and we also have um, great, great partners across the nation that are doing similar work. So i um, excited about that and, and grateful for the collaborative um, kind of shared uh, vision and mission when it comes to that. All right, so um, I'm gonna, I think we probably have uh, some people who have completed their survey at this point. Um, I think was, we can go ahead and move forward into the next portion of our, of our conversation. Nice, nice. So as they're completing those uh, surveys, why are we here today? Well, first let's talk about a couple of rules, in-house rules of how this is gonna work. All right, the first thing we want all of our youth to participate, right? You have an opinion. We've been saying it since we've been on here. We want to hear your opinion. So we might ask you to type something into the chat room or when you go into your breakout rooms, we want to definitely hear what you have to say. So that's the first thing. We want you to participate and be engaged. Also, with that being said, when someone else is talking, we need you to just to listen, embrace whatever opinion that someone else has, respect that they have an opinion because we will respect yours and just listen to it. Maybe take in some new insight or say to yourself, you know, I never really thought of it that way. That's very interesting, right? So we want you to participate. We want you to listen because all opinions matter. And finally, we want you to have fun with this. This is not the time to just be quiet and be shy. We don't want this to be like school. We want this to be fun because again, you're helping the city of Detroit or whatever city that you're in become a better city. So those are the rules of engagement. Just to see if everybody's on the same page and keeping everybody energetic, 
This is something that we did last year, just to know that you're with us. Right now, I just want to see everybody give me some hands. Let me know that you're with me. Let me see those hands. That's looking good. That's looking good. All right. All right. Fellas, right now, if you got a muscle, go ahead and show me a muscle. If you got a muscle, just for the fellas. All right. 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 Okay. Ladies, ladies, you might have some too. Let me, let me see. Ladies Thank might you. have muscles right now. Wait, wait. Oh, oh, go. I see Maria with a couple. Oh, she's been working out. Cool. Okay. Cool. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> The last thing I, we're going to do right now is just a really icebreaker. Students, I want you really, really quick. You got like 10 seconds to 10 name seconds. your favorite music artist. Just go ahead and throw it in the type in the uh, chat box. Who's the best musical artist right now? Who's hot? Who could it be? I'm going to start from one. One Mississippi, there two Mississippi, go. countdown, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, J. Cole. J. Cole, I know. Five Mississippi, Drake. Six Mississippi, Joey Vantes. Uh oh, okay, that's a new one. <laughs> I know Drake is on like every third. Seven Mississippi, yep. eight Mississippi, Rod Way. Artist. <laughs> what is Giveon? I'm sorry. Can you can you come off mute and tell me how to pronounce that? <laughs> Young boy. Young boy. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah, I never heard of Rod Wave. I got to update my playlist, man. I don't know any of these people. Jesus. I'm definitely <laughs> updating my playlist and um, so I can relate. I want to be able to relate to the youth. All right. Yeah, me too. So today we talking about police and what are the roles of police officers? We've seen them on television. We've seen them on movies. We've seen them in commercials. And many of you have probably seen them in person somewhere doing something. But what are the roles? That's what we want to talk about. Do we ask our police officers to do too much? Are they not doing enough? What should your police officer be thinking about when they're in your neighborhood? What do you want from your police officer? So that's what the hot topic is right now, because, you know, when we talk about these movies, man, I, we see them jumping out of buildings and, and, and jumping out of fires and doing police chases and sliding down uh, bridges. Is that enough? Is that asking too much? Is that just the movies? Or should officers be trained to do all of that? Is that what officers are doing? Because I feel like that's a lot. Well, if, I, <laughs> if I was a star in a movie, that's what I would be doing, right? I would be doing all that well, stuff. Well, we want to know what, what the kids think. So yes, that's yes. what this is about. So yeah, so we again, we want to get your opinion on what you think the roles of police officers are, right? And if you was a police officer, would you do these same things? Do we ask our police officers to do things that maybe we wouldn't do ourselves? Is that fair or is it not? There is no right or wrong answer, only your opinion. And your opinion is always the right thing to say, all right? So Maria, what do we have? Well, how do we do this now? What's, what's going on next? Is it, is All right. It... So what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to begin breaking the group up into smaller groups where you can have discussion. Um, so we're going to throw on some break, breakout room music and we'll begin to do this transition um, into these breakout rooms. Um, and you'll have some questions in there. You have a facilitator in the in the room with the with the youth, and a note taker who's going to take some copious notes on the discussion that takes place because we want to capture the richness of the discussion. But also, we have some um, questions that we're going to um, ask, and, and youth, we want you to answer those questions. And the questions are there for a guide, um, but they're by no means uh, restrictive. So if you have things that you want to talk about that's related to the roles of police, then feel free um, to discuss that as well. Okay, so we're actually going to go ahead and start breaking out into those breakout rooms now. It won't happen all at once, but it'll happen um, relatively quickly. And while they're getting into their breakout rooms, if you're just joining us, this is uh, Detroit Pal and Ford's Critical Conversation, where we engage youth to help shape the roles and responsibilities of police officers so that we can have a better community, a better understanding of each other. Um, because police work is not us against them, them against us. It's not that at all. It's all for one and one for all. And together we can build our communities to the community that we want it to be, all right? So hang out with us while they go into the breakout rooms. We're gonna have a lot of fun. You're gonna stay here with uh, Maria and myself 
And we're gonna talk about a couple of things uh, about PAL, what's going on in general, while the students go ahead and share their ideas. All right. And for those who don't know, Detroit PAL is on social media. We're on Facebook. We have uh, Twitter. What else do we have? We have Instagram. Uh, just, just go ahead and look us up, uh, DetroitPAL.org. That's DetroitPAL.org on all the social media. Uh, we've been serving youth for over 50 years, 50, 50 years. years, over 50 years. Uh, and at our highest point, we served up around, was it about 14,000 kids in one year? 15,000 easily. 15, oh, okay. Over, four, over 400,000 youth over the course of the 52 years, um, which is amazing. It is amazing. So the, the, the good thing about it is, uh, as pal kids grow up, they put their kids in and then they put their, their grandkids in and it goes on and on and on. And again, that just speaks to the level of community involvement and some of the great things that's going on at Detroit PAL and in the city of Detroit. So I'm interested to know what, they, what they're gonna say in their breakout rooms. Uh, we have people from around the country. I'm really interested to know uh, their perspective of not only the critical conversations, but uh, what perspective comes out of their breakout rooms with the kids as well. Yep, so just a quick uh, poll of the room. We have uh, people who join us from Alabama and Houston and um, from Flint and Kalamazoo. And whoa, whoa, whoa. did you say Alabama and Houston? Yes. Is that what you just said? Alabama and Houston, wow. right in this room with wow. us. Wow, um, amazing. Which is cool, right? And it speaks to um, community commitment and um, just a shared vision and wanted to do this, just seeing the importance of it. And, um, and we're excited. We're excited to have these conversations from all the way across our country. That's one good thing uh, that, that I hear about uh, Detroit Palace, their ability and strength to partner with like-minded organizations. So that's really refreshing to hear that uh, we're in this together with people from around the country. Uh, like you say, Alabama and, and even Flint, Michigan. Uh, we know the tough times that, they, that they've been through in recent history, and so that they've taken time out to go ahead and join us here at this uh, critical conversation. Yeah, so, and I just found out we have Gross Point in the house too. Gross Point. So thank in you the for house. joining us. Um, again, special thanks to for Motor Company Fund uh, for the support of this program. Without them, it wouldn't be possible um, to bring us all together in this space virtually. And um, just really grateful and excited about. Uh, what's going to take place here over the course of six weeks. This program is a six-week program. We'll be here every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and you can see us live on Facebook. And we'll also have, uh, we'll be, uh, have these sessions available on YouTube for youth to be able to share um, where you are, where you, you normally um, uh, receive your, your information from and your content from. Um, so we're, we're considering all of that and excited to hear what you have to say in those breakout rooms. Absolutely. I see we have uh, DeAndre Gaines here. Um, I know him. Uh, I know that uh, he's a father, a proud father uh, with a, a young son. So I, I just want to ask Mr. Gaines here, uh, why do you think these things are important to have conversation with our youth? Uh, you're on you're on mute, Mr. Gaines. Yeah, great question. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, you cover it. Like you say, it's uh, not a us versus them. It's a, a we thing, a team thing. And um, we just have to bridge the gap, bring the community with the police together, uh, live in harmony, and show our young people that the police are not the enemy, but they're actually uh, there to help you. And programs like this, I believe, is a great way to get that started. Well, appreciate that insight there. Um, you know, just a little bit about uh, Detroit PAL for those who may not be familiar with it. Uh, traditionally, Detroit PAL has uh, 11 sports, so we're mostly known for our sports, but we're breaking off into other different things that we call youth enrichment. So I know Mr. Gaines' son uh, participated in the Detroit PAL summer camp that we had, which was amazing. It was uh, five days a week. 
uh, from 9 a.m. till seemed like to 4, 5 p.m. 4 p.m. 4 p.m., <laughs> right? It was an amazing time, right? The best eight hours a day, eight five hours. days a week. Yeah, and very affordable thanks to our sponsors. So uh, it was not just we get the kids together and we do sports. So we did a lot of different things that you'll hear about a little later. But it's really about the development of the child. And we know that when, when children are, when children don't have anything to do, especially after school, they'll find something to do after school, whether it's constructive or destructive, they're gonna find something. So organizations like Detroit PAL and, and the PALs around the nation, give those kids the opportunity to go ahead and, and have a structure, right? Because I, I tend to think kids and people in general commit crimes because they just run out of opportunities, right? Uh, education may be limited, uh, access resources may be limited. And so people are trying to survive. Well, when we put them in, po in front of positive role models, uh, and let them know that there's other things out there. Hey, have you ever thought about doing this? Have you ever thought about doing that? What about traveling? The mind starts to tick about, you know, what their future could look like. And that, that helps them stay away from crime, we hope. Now we can't solve, uh, save everybody, but I like the work that is being done by our community leaders. All right, so I think um, most people have been moved into a breakout room. Is there anyone still on that still needs to go into a breakout room that's a youth or a facilitator or a note taker? Youth facilitator or note taker that still needs a breakout room? Uh, I need a room yeah. for note taking. It looked like George yeah, and thank you, Tim. also and Gaines. George. I'm still hanging out with you all, so. Okay, George Paisley, Gaines, and Tim need to go into breakout rooms. Thank you. Um, all right, and then remember when you're in those breakout rooms, you can ask for help. There's an ask for help button that you can press and um, we'll send assistance into the room to help you if you need it. Okay. Cool. All right, so, um, so what's, what's gonna take place in this large group session for those who are still here with us? Um, you have one of two options. You could hang out with me and, and Mr. Norwood here um, and we'll show some videos and we'll um, share some information about the good work that we're doing in the community um, or you can go into a breakout room. And so if you just put in the chat uh, what your preference is, then we'll, either let you stay here or you can move into a breakout room to listen to discussion with the youth. Okay, um, so go ahead and do that in the chat right now and our team will um, make sure that you are moved appropriately if you, if you would like to move into a breakout room. Okay, um, and while that's happening, uh, we can actually go ahead and we have- uh, Excuse me. Sorry oh. to interject. Ed Womack in room one asked for help. Can I send someone? Yes. Um, if you could send George or send Tim, could are you available to help him? Yes. Okay. All right, send in them now. All right, thank you. We'd really like to get uh, George and Paisley in one of those. Yeah, let's put George in um, that room with Ed Womack as well. And Paisley, if you could put Paisley into a different room, that'd be great. Now, so Paisley is signed to room. Please bear with us. This is week one. We're going to get it together. Uh, we are resilient here. <laughs> <laughs> the breakout rooms can always be uh, a lot of fun, but. <laughs> Yeah, But I know we have a lot of kids that are already in those breakout rooms and they've already started having conversations. So um, I'm super excited to hear what they were able to come up with. Um, um, Tony, Miss Mitchell, where, and then I'm not sure who Sean Thompson is or KK. Yes, this is Tony Mitchell. I think I had sent a message to be in a breakout room. I was trying to be in the one with my son. It's just the minus for a little bit. Okay. John Thompson, I do not need a breakout room because I'm actually the sponsor. So I'm just here for a few minutes. Thank you. 
got it. All right. Let's see. Um, yeah. So the first time is always a little, can be a little bumpy, but it should go much more smoother than this uh, once everyone has been assigned to their breakout rooms. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, this is Ford's Critical Conversation, where youth get to express their opinion about law enforcement and the state of law enforcement. We'll be on every Tuesday at five o'clock till, I'm sorry, at six o'clock till- Eastern time. Eastern time, that's correct. Yeah. We have to consider the time zones because we have um, supporters from across our country um, each week that are joining us to be a part of these conversations. Super exciting. And we want to thank Eastern each and every one. Eastern time. Eastern time, six to eight Eastern time. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you. All right. So um, we have a, actually a video that we like to show. Um, so if we could cue that video, uh, this is just a a nice overview of what we've done over the last year, year and a half or so. Um, in response to COVID, there's been a lot of changes that took place, um, a lot of flexibility, a lot of adaptation that had to happen to be able to serve the community um, in the way that we have. And so hopefully this gives you just an idea of some of the great work that uh, Detroit PAL is doing in the community. So we have um, lots of uh, different programs that took place over um, the course of the year from our four critical conversations that we did last year to our summer camp, to um, all of the different sports programs that we did virtually um, just to keep kids active um, and, and, and make sure that they were engaged in that way from to STEM programs. Um, yeah. Ecotech science was one of the things that we did. Uh, so if you can imagine, we're teaching kids, little tiny tigers, uh, four to eight years old. Uh, we're teaching them the fundamentals of uh, how to throw, how to um, catch, how to hit, right? But then we take them to a room and we teach them how to make biodegradable baseballs. It looks like our video is ready. So we'll go ahead and play that uh, for you all and then more commentary to come. getting the kids active, we're sharing about our great model, um, we have some fear taking place. Wow, look at those flips. Um, Our oh, the police showing up. Day. We need policing day we did as well, which is a great hit. Bringing in helicopters for the kids. <laughs> Flying yeah, in helicopters. Yeah. Yeah. Holiday, um, turkey giveaways. Highlighting our youth, teaching them the fundamentals of golf. That's a yes. Bit of yes. Um, and, and we just have fun, right? We're family. We're family um, at Detroit Pal. Definitely a family atmosphere with all the activities that are going on. Like we said, sports is the draw. But since we have them there, might as well give them something uh, fun and, and educational to participate in. Now, Maria, you mentioned something about biodegradable balls like like what <laughs> i know a, what is that <laughs> i mean we're teaching our kids about the importance of um preserving and taking care of our planet um, so we think about all the um, baseballs that might end up in a landfill and they never degrade and so this is really cutting edge um ideas that some of the top executives some of the top corporations 
are uh, are dealing with. And so we're teaching our kids at a young age to think about the impact on the environment. And then they're learning, they're learning um, about science in a hands-on way and preparing them, right? So we think about what we do for kids that play sports. Um, when a kid is really good at sports and they show promise and they show interest, we remove all of those barriers for those kids to be able to go farther. Um, so we're doing that with our, um, with all of our youth enrichment programs as well. So a program like Ecotech Science, we're teaching kids about STEM. And when that kid um, joins that program and they show interest and they um, show potential to go farther, we're removing the barriers for them as well so that they can become experts when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and math. And we're opening up opportunities for them to create the best life um, that they could they could possibly dream of. Um, and that's it, what's so really, cool. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, you know, that's really cool. Um, because a lot of times uh, students, they, they just see the same things all the time. You know, we, we know baseball and football, basketball are very, very popular. But, you know, Detroit Pal kind of bring those things that maybe they wouldn't, they didn't think about prior to that. So you say Ecotech with the science. And I know there's a chess program, like we're making being smart cool. Like that's, that's really exciting, you know, to, to, to have something at your disposal that you could just try. You know, you won't like everything, but again, it sets the tone that I can try something different than what my friends are doing all the time. So that's what's really cool about the things that are going on at Detroit Pal. And I know that there's a partnership with the, was it the Girl Scouts? Or was it big, this big camp that was held at the corner ballpark? Um, what was yeah. that about? Yeah, we did a global sleeping under the stars with the Girl Scouts of Southeast Michigan. And we, we brought about a hundred girls onto the field of Detroit Pal with their sleeping bags and their tents. And we had arts and crafts and we had food and we had a movie on the field. And we talked about the great motto. And we talked about community um, influencers, those who have made a significant impact, uh, those who, um, participated in sports or they may have been sports legends in their own right, but then they took it a step further um, to be able to give back to their communities and understanding the platform that they had. So um, we're setting the bar high for our kids. We're giving them experiences and exposures um, and, and sharing that this is what we expect from them as well. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And, and to be honest with you, um, all the kids love sport and, and we absolutely create that platform for them. That's what we're good at, right? But we partner with others so that we can bring these other opportunities to the kids, right? We, we take advantage of the influence that sport has um, because we know that every kid is not going to be a professional sport um, athlete. They're not gonna, every kid is not going to be professional. The, the statistics show um, maybe 3% might become professional athletes. Uh, less but than one half percent. Is that the new statistic? Okay, so less than one half percent are yes. going to become professional athletes. But um, all of the other kids, the other 99 and a half, uh, <laughs> or what is it, 98 and a half percent more um, are going to go on to be great in something else. In, in something else. And, and we want to play our role, do our part in making sure that kids have exposure to um, di di different careers, whether that's finance or whether it's science or um, whether it's architecture or, um, you know, lots here's of different things that they can do. Here's what's, what's interesting, you know, that just my observation. So we talk about athletes and, you know, of course, a lot of kids want to become that star athlete, but there's actually more jobs in athletics than actually being the athlete when you think about it, right? So right. we don't think about these things, Maria, all the time. The kids don't think about them. They're like, someone has to design the uniform. Someone has to cut the grass. Someone has to broadcast it or write about it in a newspaper. All these things. I just found out that there's a thing that's called, was it professional gamer? No, stat. I'll describe it because I, I don't know what it's called, but I found it to be very amazing that professional teams will have a gamer that would travel with them. So let's just say it's the, I don't know, the Pistons or someone. And when the Pistons go play the Lakers, uh, they, they, their gamer, the Pistons gamer will play the Lakers gamer. And then there's someone who keeps stats of all of that. 
and, and then someone that, that, that forms the, that league. Like it's so many opportunities in sports other than being the athlete. Uh, and I know that you can make a good living keeping Comerica Park grass green, right? Like that's a green. job that pays well yeah, and they do an excellent job um always I think green. <laughs> we, we probably underestimate how um how difficult it is to make that happen but it's yeah. always uh perfection <laughs> when you go to the, the baseball diamond and so um, we talk about broadcasting we have a broadcasting class uh and podcasting class here at detroit pal where students uh get paired with those who are already in the profession and they learn straight from them about what it takes to be a, a great podcaster, what it takes to make a great story or how to write a great story. So many amazing things that are going on outside of being the actual athlete. So Detroit Pal, as, as our CEO loves to say, or Detroit Pal is doing great things in the community. And we, we okay. love the support that we get from our sponsors. <laughs> Absolutely. Like we got Absolutely. about five minutes left or so. About well, five minutes left, that. and and let's dig in a little bit to uh, this topic, the roles of police. Um, I'm looking, are there any youth in, in the audience right now? Um, Maybe Caleb Boyd is with Caleb us. Caleb Boyd, do you need to be, yeah. does Caleb need to be placed into a room? I think maybe Caleb can hang out with us. Okay, Caleb can hang out with us. So we're, so Caleb in the rooms right now, Youth are paired with uh, facilitators and note takers, and they're talking about the roles of police. Okay. Um, so we want to hear from you. What do you think um, is the role of police in the community? Are you able to turn your turn your camera on, uh, Caleb? Yeah, I'll be able to turn it on in a second. Okay. Well, go ahead while we're waiting. Go ahead and uh, mm -hmm. want to hear what you have to say. Um. First of all, thank you for the uh, question. I believe that the police play a very important role in our communities. Um, I believe that obviously, you know, the stereotypes of all cops are bad and things like that. I don't agree with it. I think that they're obviously very good cops. I think there are people who are legitimately trying to serve the community, but I think the issues lie with those bad cops that take advantage of their power and influence for harm and their, for, things that don't necessarily help the community. Um, so I think more so weeding out those bad cops instead of trying to punish or change the entire system itself would be more, um, it'd be more helpful than just, um, than just trying to say, oh yeah, you know, all cops are bad. So we should get rid of everybody. Wow, that's, that's pretty powerful. Thank you for that, Caleb. You know, I want to- no not because I know that you can, I know a little bit about your background. So I'm gonna put you on the spot just for a second, right? In 30 seconds, if you were chief of police in Detroit, what would be okay. the first thing that you would wanna change? You're the chief. You got it. <sighs> Think about that. Um, I know that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I'd wanna change, I'd say really just this, um, the image I think the first thing I really want to change is that not only of the police, but of the city of Detroit in general. So maybe we have police officers that are, that are out, you know, doing a ton of community service work, having police officers that are out, you know, helping pass things out, helping do things within our schools that really bring the community together and really get people more so believing in the power of police and more so believing in the good that they bring to our communities. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. So uh, Caleb here, is, he's, he's more about positive reinforcement, uh, promoting that positive image. Uh, that, was pretty, that was pretty interesting that you, that you went for community engagement. And so that's kind of what's going on here um, as we get to talk about these things, uh, youth get to express their opinion and maybe this will get back to the people that need to hear this. So, so thank you for that opinion there, uh, Chief. I call you Chief. No problem. <laughs> I know right. that sometimes you, you know question? oh go oh, ahead oh no go ahead I'm sorry Maria I was just wondering do we have another question that we can pose to Caleb I thought he answered so well and yeah. it's kind of cool to let um our audience see what's taking place in the breakout rooms a little bit yeah well okay so we'll flip it we'll flip it again so we talked about what you would change what's one thing that you like that you see that you would definitely keep or even enhance 
I like that question. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I say one thing that I keep is, let me see. Um, I probably keep the community service aspect. I'd probably keep, you know, people like you, Officer Norwood, that are, you know, doing great things within Detroit PAL and doing great things to overall help the community. I'd keep those sort of people around. As a matter of fact, I'd probably incentivize more, more people like that to stay by either giving them a pay raise or, you know, other incentives, just so that they do understand that, okay, yes, your service is appreciated. We like what you're doing. We want you to keep continuing to do that. We want to try to motivate other people to do the same things that you're doing. Well, yeah, you you are right. pretty much groomed to be a chief. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it looks like our um, everybody's back from their breakout rooms. So welcome back, everybody. Cool, cool. And I know there was some dynamic conversation that took place in those breakout rooms. Yeah. So we want to dig right into it. So while they were in the breakout rooms, uh, they got a chance to talk about what are the roles of police officers. A lot of things were probably talked about. And so at this time, uh, each group should have a, a, a youth representative that can kind of report back 30 seconds or so some of the takeaways that took place in that room. So with that being said, uh, I, I don't know the names of the rooms, but breakout room one, was that how they were named? One? Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the takeaways that came out of breakout room number one? And before we begin, just state your name, uh, that you were part of breakout room number one, and your age, your name and just your age, just your first name and your age. Yep, so Norwood, I was in breakout room one, and we had one youth participant that we named as our only child, Joe Sanders. And so he's oh. going to speak on behalf of um, breakout room one. Can't All right, wait. cool. Where you at, Joe? Come on, Mr. Sanders. <laughs> I'm right here. So in group one, it was me, Mr. Womack, Miss Paris, and then Mr. George. Um, we talked about trust, if we trust the police, and um, me, and, me, Mr. Womack, and Mr. George um, said that we do, while Miss Paris said <laughs> that she grew up in a household where she was told, like, not to call the police or um, things like that, just not to, you, you only call the police if there's something very extreme happening. And then we talked about concerns uh, about the police. I said that I'm concerned that um, police are getting too political nowadays and that their politics are usually involved in their work ethic. Um, Ms. Paris said that, Ms. Ms. Paris and Mr. George both agreed that, um, mental health was a big part in um, police officers and that they needed to focus on mental health. But Ms. Paris actually said that police officer, officers should start um, learning and training more on ha how to deal with mental health victims. So whether that was someone with a bipolar disorder or autism and just how to approach that person. Wow, that was a lot that was said. A lot of good, deep stuff. We went from politics to mental health. So thank you. Thank you for that, group one. All right, let's let's and all give some fingers that was on that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Give me some fingers I on that. I thought that was interesting that, um, you know, to have the thought of only calling when there's a, a dire emergency. Um, but that's even something to, to think about, that um, when there is a dire emergency, um, that's when you would call <laughs> the, the police. Cause that's the, those are the ones who are going to run towards that, um, that fire and, and help put it out in a sense, in, um, figuratively speaking. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting, but great takeaways from that, that room. Thank you. Great takeaways. Let's move on to group two. Who do we have for group two? Who's our representative? And we can have the, um, adult facilitator. Uh, to welcome your youth participant or your youth uh, person who's going to speak on behalf of the group. I'm not sure. I, I think we were number two. I'm not sure. We weren't given a number, so let's roll with it anyway. So, right, right. Okay, so um, 
I'm Shanetta Paisley, and I, we were group two. I have um, uh, Paul Span number, he's number one. He's going to be Paul number one, and then we have Paul number two. And then we have um, two students, two youth. Um, the first one is KK. Um, and then Taisha came in a little later, so, but um, they were able to um, speak and they're going to tag team. Uh, one will say a little bit and the other one will say a little bit after that. So we got through all the questions. Um, so I'll let them introduce themselves, but the both of them will be our spokesperson. All right, we're interested to hear from them. Just, you know, for the sake of time, we just want to make sure you guys, about 30 seconds to a minute, the takeaways, the great takeaways that came out of your room. So let's hear it. Okay, come on, KK, go. You, you're up first. Miss KK. Um, hi, my name is Kayla, and we talked about how much safety we put, how much safety we put in with police officers and what situations have we been experienced with. Excellent, excellent. So uh, your personal interaction with police officers, that's a different perspective. Okay, all right. We have one more representative in there. Um, hi, my name is Taisha. Um, we was also talking about, um, did she say this already? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna just say it again. Um, the concerns and how we felt about the police personally and what experiences did we have with the police. Um, since I'm around police's most majority of the time, I've never really had a, you know, encounter with them that ever made me feel like I was um, going to get hurt or anything or uncomfortable. So, yeah. Would you Let say me that just you're add, add to that, Norwood? Um, Taisha is a an explorer, um, and KK's aunt is uh, a Georgia PD. So both of them had all positive things to say about police. They've never had any bad experience. So I'm going to explain know. what an explorer is for those who don't know what that is. Really quickly. Taisha. Um, it's a group of youth that um, once maybe in the future become police officers and train and stuff like that. That's what a... No, it's like learning discipline. Also uh, learning discipline. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. I love that. So for youth, um, I think that's significant because think about how youth can come and um, police the communities that they live in in a way that they see as um, just, right, and and fair, and, and just uh, protecting and serving the communities that they're from. Um, so that's a great. I think that's a great program. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I know that you all, uh, the two of you had experience with police officers in your family. Just real quick, would you say that most of your peers, your friends share the same view of police officers as you do? Or may do you think it might be a little different? Just curious. Can you repeat the question? Do you think most of your friends or your peers view the police officers the same way that you do? Probably, probably not from like the media and what they heard and stuff like that. I don't think they view it as the same way as I do because they probably haven't been around as many officers or hung around or got to know as many as I got to know, but I'm not sure. Interesting, interesting. You know, speaking of the explorers, I see uh, one of our sponsors, uh, Sean Thompson was a Detroit police cadet as well. So that, that program must be doing great things. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So who else have we need to hear from? Thank you for, from group two. That was that was thank very you. insightful. Thank you. That was insightful. Uh, who would like to go next? Group three or anyone? Anyone that's think, really step up. I think I'm group three, I think. But I'm going to go ahead and go. <laughs> I'm okay. Kim Silver. Kim Silver and I had two new students with me. And one, Miss Takesha. Yeah, a, from Bessemer. Bessemer, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Happy to be here, but Ms. Takesha uh, had great questions. I think we have a future officer on our hands, so I'll let her take over and explain what we were able to discuss. Nice. Okay, hello, my name is Takesha Boyer. I'm 16 years old, and in, the, in group three, we talked about the hardships of being an officer 
And when I was talking to the officer, he said like the hardship was like telling the family bad news. And then I asked him, um, do you believe females officers are treated differently than um, males? And he said in some cases, yes, because there aren't a lot of females in the work field. And then uh, I was asked about my, like if I know any officers personally, and I was like, yes, because I work with officers by volunteering. And then it was like the view of officers and if they're good or bad, and if I would like to become an officer. And then it was how my peers view the officers versus how I view them. And I feel that if peer, if a lot of people aren't near officers or like know how they really are personally, they will like fear them and I trust them. So I feel like if there's there are more like events where the youth get to be closer to the officers, then there'll be less fear and more communication and trust with the officers. And the viewpoint wouldn't be that bad. All right, I see Michelle, let's give him some fingers, yes. Yes, I'm loving the energy. That's what's up, that's what's up. Thank you for that insight. <laughs> Thank you for the insight. Do we have, uh, I know we got a couple more groups that we love to get to. Uh, maybe one more for this one, just one more. Uh, who would like to step up? I think we'll uh, do, I had the privilege to uh, be in group five with uh, two outstanding students, Timothy and Kiana. Um, and they wanted to say a few words. It was a great critical conversation that we had. Um, our scribe was Miss um, Drake. She did a good job scribing for us. And But we want to hear from them. So Timothy, I want you to say a few words. And then after you, Kiana, I want you to say a few words about our session. Mr. Timothy. Uh, all right, so uh, we talked about whether we had a positive or negative a view on police. Um, uh, what I said that uh, I had a positive um, perspective. Well, it was whether we were comfortable or not. Um, I said I was comfortable with the police around uh, because I haven't had a bad experience. And normally when I am around police officers, uh, I'm just driving by them. Um, I rarely see anything that I would think would be unjust from them. I don't see them that much in general. Uh, and um, uh, I think that was it. Okay, good job. Kiana, mom, you on the line? Still, still with us? Kiana, yeah. Her, her mom is going to interpret. Oh, OK. Her. Excellent. I don't think that. I don't know if mom is still on mute. I yeah, I think they're still on mute. Let's see. Okay, I was just making sure that the interpreter could see me. Okay. Okay. Well, I learned from my uncle's friend, Brian. You know, he has the game truck. And, you know, also my cousin, he works as a police officer. And I always see him, you know, helping out older people if they have the issues or any emergencies or if they're hurt, they're always there to attend to help. And if the individual can't hear, I've always seen them very eager to get pen and paper to get, you know, to make sure they have clear understanding of the conversation with the deaf individual. And they, you know, and I also, you know, I do trust police officers, you know, they, if they're ever, if the situation the individual is in a threat or, you know, a crisis situation, they're always there to help the individual. So yes, I do trust police officers. Oh, and one more thing, but I don't trust, you know, some police officers who, you know, always do negative things like, oh, you're deaf and, you know, they don't, you know, they haven't even took the time to see them or see if they're deaf or unexplained 
or give them the chance to un explain what's going on. You know, it's just coming, oh, wait, they just put me in jail. I don't have the explanation of what's going on. Then wait, they have to wait to get an interpreter to understand what situation is going on. So some police officers are bad and some are good. You know, I think it's a 50-50 thing. Thank you for that insight. So what, I, what I'm hearing is that maybe uh, some police officers should show a little bit more patience when dealing with the community uh, or get more training at certain instances. So I don't think anyone on here would be opposed to either one of those things because who couldn't use more training in their job? And we know that police officers have been sworn to protect and serve the community. So more training would definitely be helpful. Um, so that's, that's great insight uh, that you came with, uh, you stated the problem. And then you also came with a, a, another solution out of concern, not out of anger. So I think that's very helpful to, to come from a place out of concern. So thank you for yes, that. It sounds like a lot of the youth on this call uh, are pretty comfortable with law enforcement for the most part. And I think uh, one thing that was key, uh, which Timothy mentioned is that he hadn't had any negative interactions with police officers. And uh, I think sometimes our perception can come from um, outside influences um, or somebody else's experience. Um, so I think that's that's significant to to just highlight. Um, so thank you for sharing that, um, Timothy. And I just I'm curious to the kids on the call if anybody wants to answer, you can. Um, if you if you're a youth that has had a positive experience and trust police officers because you haven't had any negative experience. What do you think about um, the, the negative um, uh, press that some police officers get in the media? Um, and uh, what do you think is a possible solution to um, those negative instances where, where police didn't do, um, maybe they, were, they didn't protect and serve like we thought they should? Uh, I can go. Yep. Um, well, I said this in our breakout room. Uh, you know, the media, yeah, um, they they point out the bad things, and you know they don't mention the fact that they still are uh, regular citizens at the end of the day, and um, you know, like once they're done with their shift and stuff. Um, and uh, like I was saying that if you were to show uh, a kid a video of a bunch of videos of people riding camels and you said, everyone has a camel, people are riding camels all the time. It's a good chance it would believe you because um, like, it's it's inexperience with um, the it's uh, ignorant about the world around it. So it's kind of the same thing with police officers. You know, they're always showing us negative images of them, and then that's how people feel about them afterwards. So I think a solution to that would um, we can't control what the media puts out there so um i think the only solution is that people you know create their own perspective outside of what other people show them and go based off of that look at that i gotta give timothy a, a big round of applause on that one that's what's up timothy yeah Way to express it. Good job, uh, job Timothy. <laughs> Think oh. about it, because you can be easily influenced about what you see in the media, right? If that's all you you want to see, and for some reason, we all know that negative images flood our television screens. It floods social media. Everybody want to see the things. What what's the thing? They, World stars. That is that the thing that be out there, and everybody kind of tune into to see the violence. For some reason, people are attracted yeah. to the violence. And those positive things don't get nearly as much as attention as it should. So thank you for that, Timothy. We really appreciate that. 
All right, so it's just about time for us to go back into our second breakout room. But before we do, we have um, some news, the surprise. The news, the big surprise. That surprise to some is that there are fully sworn police officers on this Zoom call, this Zoom meeting with us right now. If you are a police officer and you're on this Zoom call, just say your name and, and what city you represent real quick. Name and city. Shnetta Paisley, Detroit. Yo, Dorsey, Detroit Police. Oh, Sorry. Who's that? Chad, I'm Detroit Police. Paul Spad, City of Flint Police. DeAndre Gaines, Detroit Police. Brian George, Detroit Police. Mark Norwood, Detroit Police. John Elmore, Gross Point. Gross Point? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it looks like we have, do we have one more chief? I thought we had a chief one on, on the call. No, all right, That's I know me. we had. Oh. Is that you? That's uh, Jared, Chief Jerry Jones. No, I'm an officer for Gross Point City. Okay, I see we have Sergeant Hall. Hall. Hey. Yeah, hey, Jordan Hall, Detroit Police. Thanks for joining us. Hey, you. That's uh, Jared, Chief Jerry Jones. Okay. No, I'm an officer for Gross Point City. Okay. I see we have Sergeant Hall. She keeps trying, she keeps trying to promote Street Police. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. All right. I see Chief Alcorn. Jared, Chief Jerry Jones. Um, no. uh, like we hear police radio going okay. on. <laughs> I see we have Sergeant Hall. Um, no, it looks like it's on the loop. <laughs> All right. I see Chief Alcorn. Technical situation. I'm going to leave back in. Police radio going on. I see you have there we go. Is that um is that Riverview River Rouge Police Department? River Rouge in the house. All right, we love you out there down river. I'm a down river type of guy. <laughs> All right. So it looked like um the police are well represented in this uh, Zoom call here. I just want to hear from a couple of students. What how do they feel about that? about uh, possibly being in a room with a fully sworn police officer. If we could just get a couple of opinions uh, real quick from some of our youth. Did it change um, a few things? Does it change um, anything at all? Um, I like it. I think that, I mean, my opinion still hasn't changed much. You know, like I said, I still believe there are positive police out there and I believe everyone on here is positive. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that it's great to have those opinions and be able to speak with people who actually experience some of the things that we might be referring to on a daily basis. Nice fingers. <laughs> Thank you for that. Can we hear from a couple of officers or law enforcement personnel on here? Uh, I mean, all of you are here for the same reason, because you care about the youth, because you want to have open dialogue. Um, why? Why did you um, decide to do this? Or why? what is it about this that you felt was important? Um, and what do you wanna to bring to this conversation with the kids? We have one or two people who just wanna share. That would be awesome. Look like we got uh, Officer Jones, raise his hand. In our group, one of the things we talked about or what I seen was uh, one of the main issues, which is kind of a main issue in life in general, was communication. So having this chance for the kids to have an open line of communication um, with officers is great. And then likewise, also us having an open line of communication with the kids is a great opportunity. I feel like 
every opportunity we have to communicate with the community is important enough is should be taken. Awesome. Thank so you for that. And I know that we have officers on here real quickly who are not just regular patrol officers. I just want to reach out to Officer Scott real quick. Can you give us a little bit about what you do and why you joined? Why you joined this conversation? Oh, yeah. I work for organized crime, but I'm also a law student. I joined this conversation because I wanted to be a part of the gap bridging with the youth and the community. And I'm also a member of the national client interview team at my school. Yeah, so this is helping me become an even better listener. So when I, you know, go represent for the United States, I can like, you know, that'd be on y'all. I, I thank you. <laughs> so it looks like she wears many hats, a whole lot of hats, uh, law student, officer, giving back to the community. So thank you for everything that you do in your busy life and spending time with us this evening. Cool. Cool. That's what's up. Maria, what else we got going on? I know we're not done. We have more, more conversation in store for us. What, what we got next? Next, we are going to our breakout rooms again. Um, we, we're going to talk a little bit more about law enforcement, um, the roles of police, but we have a just a different set of questions that we're going to ask um, to get more of your feedback. So um, we're going to break into those rooms. You can begin to push them into the breakout rooms now, Justin. And um, while we do that, we want to just uh, recognize the partners that we have on this call. Um, we have a, a visual that we can share uh, with the various police departments and PALS that um, committed to be on this call with us today and, and throughout the, the conversations for the next uh, five weeks or so. Um, so just recognizing the city of Kalamazoo, thank you so much for your commitment. Um, Flint PAL, Detroit Police Department, um, the Greater Houston PAL, um, and Bessemer, Bessemer, Alabama. Again, these are um, a few, and we, don't, and we have more um, law enforcement personnel who are represented in this call who um, we're happy to promote and share as we continue. Um, welcome you to, to continue to be a part of this. But again, thank you to Forge Critical Conversations. Um, thank you to Ford Motor Company Fund for creating this opportunity for youth to engage with police officers. Yeah. All right, so. Yeah, if you're just coming in and uh, clicking on with us, again, this, like Maria said, this is Ford's Critical Conversations where youth get a chance to express their opinion uh, to police officers. They just been told that they were uh, talking to police officers. They didn't know Prior to this, when they were sharing their opinions, it was just revealed that they were actually talking to fully sworn police officers. And most of them felt okay with that. They, they felt comfortable, their opinions, uh, were, they stood strong by their opinions. And so now after that they know, they're going to speak about different, uh, some of the same topics, but different questions. They're gonna dig into it a little bit deeper, now knowing that they're actually talking to a fully sworn police officer. So this is quite unique, this is fun, this is interesting, and this is something that we can all learn uh, as a community so that we can grow together. Absolutely. And so, um, Corporal Norwood, you are a police officer. Um, tell us, what has been your role in the community um, in, in, within Detroit PAL? Yeah, so I've been with Detroit PAL since 2004. That's the Police Athletic League. And over the years, things have really, really changed. So when I first got to Detroit PAL, I started off with what we call now athletic director, where you basically, um, I was running the baseball league and the girls basketball league in the wintertime. And you kind of put a schedule together. Uh, you get, you recruit kids to come play these sports, try to keep them off the streets, try to give them something positive to do. And now moving to 2021, however many years later that is, I quit counting after 10 because it really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we're going more into youth enrichment, which is something I take a, a great deal of pride in. And what youth enrichment is, is pretty much everything that's not a sport in Detroit, pal. So uh, working with you, Maria, you know, it's been a, a great working relationship as we brought new programs uh, over the years to Detroit PAL. Uh, you mentioned earlier the Ecotech, which is a STEM program. Uh, we, we brought the chess program with some of the finest coaches 
in the and city. And you play Detroit. chess, is that correct? I, I yes and no, right? I know how to move the pieces. Uh, I could beat a few people, but I don't think I could beat anybody that's in our chess program right now. <laughs> None of the kids, you mean? You can't beat any of the kids? Mm, I, w- I would sweat, you know, even in middle school. <laughs> It would take all of my skills to try to beat one of them. Those those kids are good. Uh, you know, our community partners, like I said, with Coach Chevelle and, and the rest of the coaches out there uh, leading the way, uh, our kids are, are bright. And so they take that seriously. They, they, they travel and everything, play competitive chess. Uh, mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier that we have our sports broadcasting and journalism class. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we've just started a brand new, this is a sport, but I'm happy that we brought it back. Uh, two weeks in now, we started, uh, we brought back the hockey program. So Yay. I learned to skate, you know, for those who don't know me, hockey, I'm very passionate about the sport of hockey. I'm even more passionate about bringing uh, things to youth who wouldn't otherwise think of those non-traditional things. So you asked me about my role there. That's something that I, I take pride in is bringing non-traditional things to our uh, our kids in the, in the city of Detroit. Just, and with that, you get them, they get the, a chance to think about things they wouldn't otherwise think of. Like, maybe I could do this. I don't have to do everything everybody's thinking, as I kind of alluded to earlier. Um, so you serve as a coach. A you coach, yes. A, coach a positive um, police exposure for youth. Um, you serve as a mentor. Uh, yes. Sometimes you serve as a father figure, in a way. Um, I know one of the things that are so... That, that I hear a lot from people who participated in Detroit PAL programming is that PAL was their family. Um, what do you think about that? Has, have you observed any of that in your years of coaching, 20 plus years of coaching at PAL? Absolutely. Uh, so PAL is a family. It, it's, it's not something that you do. PAL is something that you are. You can ask anybody that's played any sport, they probably played in PAL growing up. And so, you know, being that father figure or, or setting that family environment is very crucial uh, because sometimes uh, when they come to Detroit Pal, when you've come to Detroit Pal, that is the only time that they actually have peace in their life. Like those two hours or three hours, whatever it is, mm-hmm. That's good. they get a chance to go away. Don't have to worry about some of the troubles that they may face out in school or on the streets or, or even at home. Uh, we've been fortunate enough with our sponsors to, you know, feed many families, uh, clothe many families. Uh, they could just come with us and just really be a kid, you know, just really be a kid. And when you've been doing I this. Think, I think for some of the families, uh, some of the kids, some, sometimes you get that positive role model that you might not have at home. Sometimes you get that reinforcement because sometimes kids just don't want to listen to their parents when they even when they know, you know, they're telling the right stuff. But the parent, the kid might not want to listen. So when you go outside of your home and you have this caring mentor um, at this PAL program where, you know, that's telling you the same things, kind of reinforcing what's right and what's wrong, that that's helpful, too, as a part of uh, the village for the child, helpful for parents, the extra support. Absolutely. Because, um, you know, and I experienced with my with my own children, too. You can say something a thousand times, but somebody mm-hmm. else says one time. And they were like, yeah, I guess that's right. You know, I guess dad knew what he was right. talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, we all can relate to that. So, you know, if you're a parent, uh, but yeah, just having that safe space, you know, when they put on that shiny uniform or mm-hmm. when they get together with the youth voice council, uh, which is similar to this. And we have some of them on the call with us today. They can just go ahead and just, like I said, be a kid. Don't have to worry about where my, you know, my next meal is coming from or, or, or just all the troubles on my way to school or the stress of doing homework or the new norm as we know with with the virtual learning, like all this is new. Uh, People come to Mm -hmm. PAL for a number of things. And and the things that we can't do at Detroit PAL, you say it all the time, Maria, we like to serve as a resource. Like if we can't do it, we try to find someone else who can do it. And so those are one of the many, many reasons why Detroit PAL is so important and why we've been around for over 50 years. You know, not many companies can say that, that they've been around that long. They've had the passion, they've they've had the drive, but for some reason or another, uh, just couldn't survive. And so uh, we're very happy that we were able to serve the city. And then partnering with the Detroit Police Department, you know, the chief allows the police officers uh, some time off to come work with our youth. Because again, those youth are gonna grow up to be citizens and many of them will become police officers. In fact, a couple of kids that I coach 
uh, for some strange reason that, that I didn't know that they were actually, they've actually become police officers and, and invited me to their graduation ceremony. So I'm kind of proud about that. Like I had no idea that they were considering that. They just called me one day like, hey, I'm graduating on Thursday. I want you to come to the ceremony. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Again, Detroit Pal is not something that you do. It's just something that you are. I love that. And it looks like we have an, another guest that just joined us, um, Officer Webb. Um, would you like to come on and just tell us a little, about, a little bit about um, you, where you're from, and, and give some of that perspective um, from your pal? Well, hello, everyone. I uh, apologize that I'm not able to um, show my, 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 my face right now, but uh, I'm driving. So I, I figured it'd be good to have the um, picture on. With, and as, as y'all can see in the background, that's me surrounded by quite a few kids, you know, that are members of the PAL program here in Houston. I'm a police officer. I've been a police officer for 29 years. And I'm pretty much close to um, ending my career, but um, not yet. But the, the part of the, of the uh, organization that we have here in, with Houston PD all of our PAL officers are PAL officers. And I know it's a little bit different than some of the other departments that we met at the um, National PAL Conference. But um, we were highly involved about 20 years ago and through the course of change with new president, I mean, with new um, chief of police and new mayors, they decided to um, disband the PAL program and the DARE program. But as recently as 19, uh, I mean, 2000. 17, our, our chief, Chief Fed, well, at the time, Chief Acevedo and uh, Mayor Turner decided to bring it back. And we hit the ground running. And we've been having so much success with it because y'all know, like I know, even in the last 20 years, even though y'all have had um, the program um, to be continued here in Houston, it wasn't. But, you know, crime rates, I know definitely here in Houston have definitely increased. And a lot of juvenile activity has definitely increased in, 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 in those 20 years that we missed out on um, educating and building that bridge with the youth. But since we've um, jumped back into the swing of things, I mean, it's been so much of a 360 degree turn and a request for a lot of the schools, community centers, churches to want us to be involved in their programs that they have and in the process that, that they have. Now we, um, it's 14 of us here locally, definitely not enough, <laughs> but with, <laughs> with the programs that we have, you know, um, in, installed for us as, as police officers to go into the schools and kind of um, just pretty much talk about, you know, several topics. I'm pretty sure that y'all are familiar with them also, you know, you know, bullying, you know, drug free, being respectful, following rules and things of that nature alongside with participating with them in activities and events and just going out there and just building that bridge with them in a whole nutshell. So when they do see police officers, they won't be scared of us. You know, if they want to talk to us or have any questions, they won't be scared to ask us. And just, just the success that we've had from that in the last three to four years, it's been, I mean, overwhelming because teachers, principals, parents, they thank us so many times and request us to come just to be a part of their kids' life because they can see just the change in a lot of the students since we've came back to the schools and started getting getting our, our programs and activities back out there. I'm, I'm actually glad to be a part of, of the Detroit deal because, like I said, it gives us a chance to, to learn from each other and to see how things, you know, we can tweak things here and vice versa because Mm -hmm. We're open to a lot of events and activities and a lot of ideas because we're still kind of getting our feet on the ground and still running with it. So, and, and Maria, you know, from every, we brought down all of our officers down there for the national conference, 14 deep. Yes, I love <laughs> yeah. it. So I don't, I don't think when they have it next year, I think once, once the city get that bill back, they're going to come back. <laughs> We're probably going to let three or four of y'all go this time. <laughs> but I think it's so it's so key, right? So it was great meeting you at National PAL and, um, and just getting to know all the PALs across the country. 
that are doing this similar work. Um, I think a lot of people just are not aware that that's taking place across our country. And, um, and I thought it was key how you mentioned uh, the sustainability of the program because you get that compound effect, right? When you have consistent effort going towards just having community um, officers engaging with families and, um, and they get to see and, and begin to trust over time, right? It might not happen overnight, but, but over time, a trust is built. Um, and, and also, um, you know, how do, I, I want to pose this question to you um, and to Norwood. How has being a community police officer impacted the way that you view youth in the community? And how do you think you, your view might be different if you didn't have those exposures to youth the way you have? You can go first, Norwood. All right. Yeah. So, you know, working with the youth, um, it gives me a, actually, it helped me become a, a traditional police officer because the youth will tell you everything that's going on in the neighborhood, right? Uh, they, they, they love to talk, you know, at least that's the way it is here uh, with the, the youth that I've worked with. They'll tell you what's going on. But I'm not even speaking of just like the crimes that's going on. I'm like, just what's going on in the neighborhood? So for things like, uh, well, you know, the, the, the Jones, they live in an abandoned house over in so-and-so, so-and-so street, whatever. So you can go check that out and be like, oh, wow, we got to get them some help. Because again, when people are struggling for resources, you know, that tends to lead to a life of crime. But not that they want to do crime, they're just trying to survive. So working in the community, you get to learn some of the needs and concerns of those who you serve. So that would be my that. biggest takeaway with that, you know, just just small things because uh, you, you we can't arrest all the crimes away. We can't arrest all of our problems away. You know, uh, if you view everything, if you're a hammer, as I say, if you view everything like a nail, then, you know, you're going to hammer it away. But it gives you opportunity to learn exactly like what's going on, what are the concerns. And so we try to avoid arrest if we can and try to offer help. So that would be my experience, you know, working with with the youth and, and when you work with the youth, you get to learn about their families in the neighborhood. Yeah, I love that. And, and hear your heart in that. And uh, just another, it goes to show how, you know, police officers are human, right? We're all human. Um, so I wanna just uh, turn it over to Officer Webb to give his perspective on how community policing has impacted him. And, um, and then we have a short three minute video that we wanna show um, as the, the rest of our um, attendees join us back in this large group session. Um, and we can actually uh, prepare to show that as they're coming back in so they can view it along with us. So um, and before that though, Officer Webb, if you could uh, share your perspective coming all the way from Houston. Houston all right, sure thing. That's right, Houston, Texas, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I got family well, down there too. <laughs> okay, well, good deal, good deal. Now's the right time to be here. As compared to being up in Detroit, because y'all about to get those storms coming through there. Why you got to remind us of that? Huh? Why you got to remind us? <laughs> <laughs> but at least one thing, you know, if you come down south, it, it won't be as cold as it is there, but it will get a little bit warmer, even though it's cold down here, too. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for myself, it, it gives me the opportunity to do just as it's designed to do. I mean, like I said, my 29 years of being a police officer, me personally, I, I didn't want to, I didn't grow up wanting to be a police officer. You know, I, I got out of college, graduated and got a job and it allowed me the opportunity to go out there and do what all police officers do, help people. But by that same token, it also gave me the opportunity to go out and help youth. Initially, when I graduated college, I wanted to be a coach, mentor, you know, something in, in, in that realm, you know, of, of, of my career. But being in police department, and law enforcement, it gave me the, the opportunity to go out and, and do the right things. And like you said earlier, you know, arrest people. Okay, yeah, that's cool. But that's still not what I wanted to get out of my job. And it being in, the, in the, the 19 years of my 29 years, I've been in community service. So I've been communicating with the, with, with the community as a whole and just getting out there and keeping that bridge and that sustainability with law enforcement and that positive interaction with them. But when they brought back PAL and with the, with the negative impact that we've been receiving from kids 
lately with everything that's been going on, and for us to have that opportunity to get out there to show them that, hey, we are not the bad guys. We don't do the bad things. Not all of us are like that. It's just to show them that police always do good things because we wear T-shirts and shorts in the summertime, and then in the wintertime, you know, we wear either warm-ups or a hoodie or something that's non-threatening to where when they see us, they don't see, oh, the police, the big bad police in full uniform with the gun and the badge and the and the handcuffs and everything, and then trying to be all militant. Yeah. We kind of step away from all of that. So they see us in a whole different outlook, and it allows us to still put that foot down because I still let them know, hey, I'm still That's a police love. officer. That's <laughs> right. right. If Officer Webb got to go out there to that car and get them handcuffs and throw that shirt on, I do it. And you can see a lot of eyes widen up. But then I start laughing and telling a joke. And letting them know, hey, 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 it's not like that. Mm-hmm. But it just yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You know, it, kids, it kids love the structure. <laughs> they did. They definitely do. They definitely do. So for me, that opportunity to go out there and, like you said earlier, I had, I had, um, today we finished up our flag football tournament, and one of the, the um kids, the, the um sister, she didn't play with us, and I met her one time at one of the at, at the game Saturday. But from that time, from hearing the positive things that her brother said about the program, about myself and other officers that were out there, and coming to the event we had tonight, she ran up to me and just gave me a big old hug and said, thank you. And I'm like, all right, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. you know, I was doing a great job, but just to see the impact that it had with her. So the impact that it gets from a lot of the other parents, like, you know, Thank you. You, you. you might not get it, Officer Webb, but you're doing the right thing. And my kid, this is his first time doing this. And, and, and my kid, yeah, I, I think that's, that is so great. And um, just we have our participants, the rest of our participants joining us now. And for those of you who are joining, um, this is Officer Webb from Houston, Texas. And he was just sharing um, some of the great work that they're doing at Houston PAL. Um, and, and just the impact that uh, Houston Powell has had on the community and vice versa, um, the impact that um, the officers, that the community have ha- has had on the police officers and him in particular. Um, we hear a similar story where between um, Detroit Powell and Houston Powell that there's an exchange taking place and it's a very positive exchange. It shapes the way we view each other. In, in a positive way. So um, just want to thank you for joining us. Thank you everybody for coming back to the session. Hope you had great and fruitful discussions. i um, excited to hear what took place in those breakout rooms. And um, Corporal Norwood, you want to reel us in uh, yeah. and, and hear from, to hear from everybody? So now that we've, uh, you guys have had a, a chance to have a conversation with someone who you know for certain is a police officer. So I'm interested to know uh, what came out of those conversations. Um, so I, I, we wanna start off with maybe someone if we haven't heard from you before, uh, what were some of the takeaways that came out of your session? Uh, so someone that we haven't heard from before, can, can you volunteer to go ahead and, and set it off for us right away? Hey, Officer Norwood, it's Officer Scott. We were group six. I have Mason, Jose, and Victor. Okay. So if they would chime in, they could say what we talked about. I think I know those guys. You I'm, do. So I expect great <laughs> things from the three of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's going first? Is Mason? Mason, are you going first? What were some of the takeaways? Or Victor? You be talking about um, No, you're you're unmuted. Yep, we can hear you. What did you guys talk about in the session? We were talking about um, we were talking about how um how like how police officers work like stuff like that, and like we were talking about ourselves too. Or, and like you say, let's say for um like you know, like let's say if there, there's like an officer we don't know. It doesn't like hurt like to say hi to them. Like it doesn't hurt to like to get them know them a little, and like to like um be and like what we're talking about 
like whenever there's like danger on you and when that police officer's there i mean like the thing is that you're safe at least and like you the police officers right there for you to protect anyone really so that, that, perspective. i think that's so important what you just said victor um or Mason, sorry, I was Mason. That's so important because, um, you know, your your experience with police officers has now translated to you not being afraid with police officers you don't know, right? So you're walking into a room or into an area with police officers and your guard is down enough to where you're willing to get to know a stranger, right? Police officer, because you, um, you know, it because you've had positive experiences. And I think that's super important um, because a lot of times we can walk into a room with an officer. We haven't had those positive exposures and we're just going by what we heard or what we've seen in the media and um, automatically be guarded and and not have that that um, that perspective or that courage to say hello or my or maybe not feel welcome like you could say hello. But, you know, when you say hello, what what happens? I mean, they say hello back. Right. (laughs) whether they know you or not. Because again, all police officers are not bad and most are most are good. I, I like to believe that most are good. I think, you know, just, he brought up a really good point about that saying hello, that kind of, uh, and I asked the youth this, do you think saying hello to a police officer or anyone for that matter, but uh, saying hello, what could that change the perspective of what the police officer may have thought about you prior to you speaking to him? Like you, maybe you dress a certain way that some people think are, are non-traditional way kids should dress, you know, oh, he, he looks threatening or whatever, whatever. But if you come and say hello, could that change the perspective right off the bat, if only for a moment? You know, I know if I was on patrol and someone said hello to me, um, I would have a positive outlook on that person. We're gonna start there. I'm already gonna have a positive outlook, but if they say hello, because we don't get hellos very often. We don't what get- What if they house say house. hello and smile? And smile. How would that make you feel? That would <laughs> that would ease a lot of tension if there was any, right? If there was any, I would that would immediately change my perspective if I had a negative perspective to begin with. I'm like, oh, okay. Hello, thank you. Thank you for, for saying hello. You know, we like that. We, we love when people say hello. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you for that. That Good was uh, group number six, right? Uh, do we have group number five? A four? I don't Anything. think there were four that time. All right. Well, the floor is open to anyone who wants to share what they got of their group. So Wood, I, I don't I don't know what group I was, man. I'm, I'm okay. not sure. Uh, First of all, if I had to grade myself as a facilitator, I'm around a C minus D plus right now. You know what I'm Uh-oh. saying? Yeah, it's so, a work in progress. Yeah, it's a work in progress. But uh, some amazing, amazing people in my group. Uh, Jamil, we all recognize him from summer camp. Uh, it's signed on his TCM firm. We remember him. He was uh, he's hearing impaired. Mm-hmm. All the PAL staff remembers him. Mm-hmm. We had a good time with him. Also, we have Sister Tate, who's also hearing impaired. I believe I remember her from the Pistons uh, mentoring. I mean, they they don't let what they grow through go through stop them. They are critical thinkers, and they great gave amazing, amazing answers. Uh, Medina, we also have Medina in my group, who's eleven, going on eighteen, because she's so mature. <laughs> with her answers. Uh, Medina, if you wanted to chime in and say anything about anything we talked about so far, about your view of the police or what the police can do better, the stage is yours. So yeah, well, we talked about, uh, one of the things we talked about in our group was uh, if a police ever pulled you over or approached you, how like some people would act like some people would act negatively um aggressively or if you act positive or calmly how those effects would change the police officer's effect on how they see you so if 
somebody was coming off aggressively and saying, why'd you pull me over? Or cursing or yelling or getting mad, then it would um, click something in a police officers from my perspective, because they're supposed to keep everyone themselves and everyone around them safe. So if somebody was coming off negatively, then they would have a repulse that would kind of swirl into something that the situation wasn't actually. But if someone was respectfully and condoned what the person was saying, then it would be um, the situation would settle down quickly. See what I mean, Maria and uh, Brother Norwood? 11 hey, going I, on 18. 18. I got to give her, Excellent. you know, give her some fingers on that one. Yeah, let's, let's, Absolutely. let's hear it. Right. Uh, also, also, I have a re request, Maria. Uh, Officer Jones from Gross Point, I need you to get in contact with his supervisor. We need him here every Tuesday. Every, every Tuesday. Tuesday, yes. Because the brother is full of knowledge and well-spoken. So that's my request. Okay, love that. Thank you for that feedback. All right. Before we go on to the next group, um, I want everyone to just take a moment in the, in the group chat and just put in one word, any word that you want that would describe police. And you can put in as many words as you want, but just give us a word, at least one word that you would use to describe police, you or your friends. And you can use as many words as you want. Uh, give us a word that would describe police, whether it's a police officer that you know or one that you don't know or, or whatever word you wanna use. We wanna see what those words are. Is this for police too or just the youth? It's, uh, it's just the youth this time. Uh, it's just <laughs> the youth. Yeah. But I tell you what, for the officers, you can put in a word that you've heard others use uh, to describe police officers. How about that, right? Won't be your words, but it's what you've heard others say, especially if you heard a youth or a young adult uh, say that word. We wanna see what some of those words are. Go ahead and throw them in the chat right now uh, while we move on. Uh, so who haven't we heard from yet? Uh, which group? Why are they putting in those in there? And again, we want all words, not just the good words. If you've heard negative words, we'll take those too, right? This is how we learn from each other. So uh, going on, uh, who's a group that we have not heard from yet? We would love to hear from you right now. Uh, what happened in your breakout session? Yeah, well, I had group one. Um, okay. We had Joe Sanders, which was our only youth. And then we had um, two adults, Ms. Paris and Mr. Womack. So, I'll let them chime in and see what they have to say. Yeah, so in group one, uh, Officer George, um, he shared a bit about um, uh, policing and how uh, um, his personal life has um, been involved with it. Um, and he also talked about how police officers have to deal with trauma in the workforce. And he said that he has a way of expressing and um, dealing with his trauma, but others do not. And um, he also talked about how he services and helps the community. And he told me that one thing he wanted me to take away from the meeting was that police officers or him himself, um, he wants to help people with their problems and not give them more help them with their problems and not give them more. That, that one part, not give them more, is really uh, standing out to me uh, because, and we'll talk about it in our future sessions about positive interaction with police officers, but the last thing you wanna do is uh, have a negative encounter with a police officer and then have that encounter go even worse, right? So that's a very powerful statement. And I don't wanna thank you for that. Um, we definitely wanna keep things positive at, at all costs. I'm looking at some of these words uh, that we have out here. Uh, yeah, have some great words. Some great words that came through. Yeah, I uh, see amazing, great, awesome, Protective. human, human. Oh, I didn't see that one. Human. Okay, who who said human? Who was that that said human? Speak now. I said human, but it was actually before you told me. Before I heard that it was on. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. We have influential. Yeah. Wow. Protection, brave, loving, honorable, individual. 
positive, trustworthy, family, honest. Yeah, brave. I don't know if you said that. Strong. Yeah. Okay. Strong. We've already saw all the muscles already. So <laughs> I guess mentally strong as well, not just physical, but mentally as well. Okay. Helpful. All right. We have some good, uh, good interactions that have taken place between the youth on this call and police. So it's good to see that. Um, I, I think we see a lot of the, op the opposite a lot in the media. And so I'm glad to bring a different perspective um, from this call and from this, this critical conversation that we're having today. Yep. I, I wanna say thank you again to our sponsor, um, Ford Motor Company Fund for making this possible. Um, for those of you who might be just scrolling through Facebook, these are critical conversations that are taking place um, over six weeks. This is week one. So we'll have five more conversations that are gonna happen on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, we invite youth to join us, more youth to join us for these conversations. Um, we'll make sure we have the link available in the uh, Facebook um, chat down there. And, um, and, and come on and have and, and share your perspectives. Maybe you have a different perspective, maybe you, uh, that you wanna bring. Um, all the perspectives don't have to be good and we can address some of those hard questions. I know we got some questions from social media, for example, um, didn't we, Norwood, where people had, you know, they were wondering some things about police officers. Yeah, we have some really, really good questions here. Uh, are we ready for them now? Or? Um, I think we can ask, we can ask some of, some of those questions now. Okay. Um, we well, have about 20 up. minutes left um, before we wrap up, but. Okay, uh, so the first one here, I'm gonna ask uh, Officer Paisley, you got about 30 seconds to answer this one so we can get as many as we want. What made you want to become a police officer and what do you like about it the most? Officer Paisley, why did you become a police officer and what do you like about it the most? Well, we, we spoke about that in our little small breakout session as well, but um, it wasn't that typical story of, you know, always being that little kid that always wanted to be the police or a firefighter. Um, I was working at a bank prior to joining the police department and I was pretty much living paycheck to paycheck. So I was looking for something to better myself. Um, so I joined the police department. Uh, fast forward 23 years later, um, I'm a very good communicator. So during my patrol days, um, I met a lot of, of people with a lot of problems that I had to go into and, and solve. So it gave me pleasure and satisfaction just to, at the end of, of the situation, to have you know, um, made things right, de-escalated the situation and made things, turned it into a positive and brought smiles to people's faces. Um, I love that. So um, fast forward, I uh, uh, arrived at PAL and I got the opportunity that I always wanted to work with kids. Um, and that has been the highlight of my career. Um, it's been a very rewarding experience. Uh, I've met a lot of kids uh, that I have been able to mentor and be a positive role model to and make a positive difference in their lives. Uh, also met um, a lot of uh, wonderful people at PAL. Uh, I love being a part of this wonderful organization uh, and um, just being a, a, able to make a positive difference in the lives of kids and knowing that um, I maybe said something or did something uh, to make their uh, life a little brighter. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. For that. That. Thank you for that. I think we might have time for one more question. Well, uh, I, if we could really quickly, I know it's a little off the beaten path, but um, we can be flexible. I'm curious if any of the kids on this call have any questions. Yes. Um, definitely want to open it up to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and want to hear from you. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. I'll give you a minute. I know it takes time to think of questions sometimes. So you can take, take your time and think and add your questions to the chat and we'll make sure that we address them, whether today or whether in one of the uh, um, next sessions coming up. So while we're answering another question that came from social media, um, you all can uh, go ahead and put any questions that you have in the chat. All right, so one more question. Yeah, this one is uh this one is a could be a tricky one. 
uh, I'm looking right here. Uh, actually, I asked Sergeant Hall this question uh, from Detroit Police. It says, do you support Black Lives Matter and do you support Blue Lives Matter? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that is very that is a, a very tricky question. But to answer it, yeah, black lives do matter. Okay. And when we say blue lives, we're talking about what police officers, right? So the police officers who serve and protect, you know, have some of us have black skin, black or brown skin. So we're talking about black lives matter. So yeah, it does matter that that police officer who puts on that uniform or that badge of service protects, um, you know does matter, we, we need to recognize that, but we need the, the bigger message being that police officers, uh, the majority of police officers are out to do the right thing. They're not, they're not out there to try to uh, you know, commit a crime or anything like that. Because as we know, as police officers, sometimes it's the, you're the closest to going to jail because if you make that wrong decision, then, then an attorney, you know, a judge and a jury will have, you know, potentially have your fate. So yeah, absolutely black lives do matter and, and absolutely police officers' lives matter. We just need to make sure that our officers are trained to do the right thing. And then we, we uh, use our training and also we use our heart and mind and we respect everybody that we serve. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yeah. yeah, Sergeant Hall, you said something that, that kind of stood out. Um, about being one step as a police officer being kind of close to going to jail. So I think there's a perception out there, and maybe you can address this, that police officers tend to get away with crime, right? Well, I'll just say tend to get away with murder, right? We've seen the, the social media, we've seen the news stories. Is that the, would you say that is the culture of the Detroit Police Department? And if not, why not? No, it's not the it's not the culture of the Detroit Police Department. A lot of us, even on social media, and we have like a social media policy on, on our department, but that still doesn't stop people from 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 putting things on there. Some good, some bad, you know, some opinion. But no, we have like an internal affairs division, and that internal affairs division, you know, is it, their responsibility is to investigate any criminality or anything like that. We have a disciplinary administration with our department, but most importantly, we have men and women. Um, whether they're police officers or whether they're not police officers, they work for DPD who are courageous enough to stand up and do the right thing. And that's what we really need in any police agency is someone that's going to do the right thing. So, and if you don't do the right thing, then in every department we have, what's, uh, excuse me, in every uh, county, every city where we have like a district attorney, you know, we have a prosecutor. And they will be responsible for charging you if you don't do the right thing, you know? So we make sure you, you operate with the right heart, operate with your training, and just do the right thing as a police officer. So and one thank you one for thing that. I'd like to um, touch up on that is that when, when we do presentations to all ages and age range, the, the main thing that, that I myself try to put out there is that we as police officers are not above the law. And a lot of people think that, well, why that cop didn't go to jail? Because he did, he did, and he did, and he did well. Like Sergeant Hall said, we are trained to do the right things. And us as police officers do not want police officers that do the bad things and the negative things to get away with that. You know, we don't want them to be considered that, that brother in blue when they're out there making us look bad. We want to do the same thing that the, the district attorney and the judges are doing, and that's get them off the street because we want to make sure that we're doing the positive things and going forward. And that way, when those things come up in the future, they know that, hey, I can go over there and talk to Sergeant Hall. I can talk to Officer Webb. I know that whatever they tell me is going to head in, in the right, in the positive direction. Yeah, thank you. That's that. Um, thank you for both of those re responses. Um, that's super helpful. And I think, um, important to know and consider that, you know, again, we're all human and we want the best for our communities. And I know there might be some youth on this call who um, may be considering a career in law enforcement based on what they've heard in conversations they had today or, um, or just experiences that they've had in the past. And so, um, uh, Sergeant Hall, could you tell us just a little bit about um, what, a career in law enforcement could entail, how 
we had a question, how can I become a Detroit police officer or how can I become a police officer um, in general for, for those who might be in a different state? I'm, I'm sure it might be some similarities in that. Yeah, absolutely. So my, my main focus is um, what job is to, I'm a, a part of our field recruiting team for the Detroit Police Department. So um, yeah, we, we definitely, uh, if you want to be a police officer, first of all, have the right heart, have the right mind. You know, if you're 18 years of age and if you want to make a difference, then, then that's why you join the police department. Yeah, we'll pay you. We'll pay for your training. We'll do all of that. But you got to have the right mindset. 18 years of age, high school diploma, GED for us. Um, you have to have the right uh, corrective vision, um, as well as a valid driver's license. So those are things that we can try to help, you know, you get in Detroit. But I know there are other agencies on this uh, call, but those are kind of like the minimal qualifications. Also, marijuana. It may be legal in Michigan recreationally, but you cannot consume marijuana. You can't smoke it. OK, you can't you can't consume it. I should just put it like that. OK, um, in, in Michigan, if you do, no matter what agency you go to, if you use it and then you're tested before you even get hired, then I'm going to tell you what our, our Michigan Commission Law Enforcement Standards. <laughs> They will, they will disqualify you for, for some years for using it. So just do the right thing, join with the right heart, and we love for you to be part of any of our teams. And I think I can speak for everybody on here for that one. <laughs> and one thing I would like to, 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 add, to add to that is you, you hit all the points, but one more important part about that is what I try to tell a lot of these middle schoolers and high schoolers is your record. That record that you have right now while you're a teen and as you get older will follow you. And outside of all the positive things that he said that the departments look at, they're going to look back at your record also and use that as a, as a um, positive stepping stone as when it gets time to um, hiring for that, that um, application process. Well, that's actually encouraging. I'm glad that um, <laughs> records are considered with, when um, hiring police officers because then we know um, if people who are police officers have um, have upheld the law that they intend to impose on others, right? Um, as a police officer, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and Maria, just real quick, you know, I wanna make sure that, you know, on, a, on future sessions, I mean, we can kind of like talk about it. People are really, really serious about doing it and they're considering it. You know, we even set up here at Detroit ride-alongs, you know? So you can ride along with um, a police officer, you know, it's be a waiver, but, um, you know, we, we would just do a sit down session, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I tell you, I, and I don't, I don't mind um, talking to anybody at any, any time uh, about it. You know, it's a, it's a tough choice. Sometimes our family, they may not want us to, to be police officers. I have family members that don't, uh, that did not want me to be a police officer. And I asked them, I said, Hey, pay my bills. <laughs> um, let, 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 let me let me let me throw our slug in there you know if you, if you want to get out of that cold weather up there you want to come down south <laughs> you still is hiring also <laughs> all right so that's great and i and i want to say to those who are on the call our other uh pals our other police law enforcement personnel across the country we want to invite you to share the good work that you're doing. So make sure you follow up with us and um, with those images or videos, uh, short clips, and we'll be sure to share those um, as we continue with this six week series. Um, so we have about seven minutes left and we have a little bit to get through before um, that seven minutes is over. So um, Norwood, I know we have some exciting giveaways that we want to share that's going to take place during this, um, this six week series. We want to make sure we talk about those but we also want to get um, feedback from the kids in terms of our youth, in terms of takeaways um, from this session and solutions that they see um, from this session that can help improve the state of policing in our communities. Um, so overall, we, this, this session is about the roles of police and all that it entails. So we talked about some things about uh, some of the problems or some of the concerns and we've also talked about some possible solutions. So I like that. Uh, we really wanna hear from any of our youth about some of the takeaways, like Maria said, of what, um, how you feel about the state of policing. So with that being said, I'm looking for youth to tell us 
some of the things that we are doing correctly and some of the things that we can improve on? What is, what is it that you see? I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna call out Mr. Paul Wilson here. Uh, Mr. Paul D. Wilson. Uh, what are some of the takeaways that you took from this session? Yes. Your mic is off, there you go. Up, oh, still can't hear you, your mic is low. I'm sorry, I was doing a lot of work over here, so my mic was muted. But to answer your question, some of the takeaways I, I took away, which I actually want to respond to, but I want to let the youth have their time to talk. Um, it was about the, the role the social media played in the images of the police officers. And one thing that dropped in my spirit when we were talking about it the first time we came back was how we show all the negativity, but we don't show the positivity. Um, it, it, I'm glad that we get to see that negativity because we do get to see you know, how other police officers are. But I also want to see those police officers that are going and giving snacks to the children in the neighborhood. I also want to see the police officers that are spending time with the youth at places like Detroit Pal or the other pals that are, you know, in the United States. That's what I want to see as well. And Officer Paisley talked about it in our second. Okay, I feel myself ramping up. I'm going to break it back down. Um, I, Officer Paisley also talked about it in our second breakout. She was talking about how the actions of a small group of police officers affects the entire image of all the police officers. So as much as I want to see them beating down George Floyd, I also want to see them going and feeding the other kids that are in the neighborhood. So that's just some of the takeaway. And I hope we actually get to talk about that a little bit more um, in the future session to come. I just think it's important to show the truth. I'm big on the truth, not just one, you know, no one side of the story or what looks good. I'm big on the entire truth. So I need to see the good and the bad so I can best determine how I feel about police officers. Cause you have a lot of people that feel bad about police officers, don't like them, don't feel safe around them. But I work with people like officer Norwood on a regular basis and people like officer Paisley who don't give me that vibe. That's why I put loving in the comment section and to cut it short. Cause I feel myself going off. We just need to show who the police officers are as a whole. The oh, good and the bad. Oh. That was my takeaway. I'm on. And now, with the, thank you for that, Paul. Thank you for expressing that. And with that being said, now we also have to hear from uh, someone else. I, you know, with Medina, I really like the way that you express yourself. What are some of the takeaways uh, that you took away from this session? Uh, thank you. Um, some takeaways took away from the session that are, like everyone has said multiple times, the media really influences how people look at police officers and some better ways we can help with that are showing the more positive parts of policing and maybe some ways that we could help people look at police officers is maybe um, exploiting the positives on social media and putting that more on the media and trying to get rid of, of more of the negative things. But those still need to be seen and heard because they're in Is she frozen for everybody else? Okay. <laughs> I thought it was All right. Good. Well, that was, that was good. I, I got the gist of it. She's saying she wants to... Um, exploit more of the positives on social media. So we can all do our part in that. And um, when you have a positive exposure or experience, even if you wanna share out your experience from this, this session, um, that can help to put some positive um, perspective out into the, the social media world and, and it makes a difference. Um, so we have two minutes left. I have so enjoyed this conversation. Um, again, thank you to our sponsors for Mortar Company Fund for the support and for making this possible. I see tons of questions in the chat, which we're going to make note of, and we're gonna incorporate those into our discussion sessions moving forward to make sure we address all of those questions that the youth have, have um, posed. And we also want to um, uh, share with you just some of the, the surprises that we have in store for you, gifts um, as, as a token of our appreciation for our note takers, for our facilitators, and for, of course, our youth. Um, we are gonna have um, some gift cards for those who complete this, the entire series, um, t-shirts, we have some other gifts, and um, we also have Pistons um, 
vouchers. Uh, they, they have a, a Pistons Give Back event every year. It's fantastic. Um, helps to take some of the burden off of uh, the holidays, make them a little bit brighter and less stressful. Um, and so we want to offer those vouchers to our participants on this call today. Um, if you would like to claim a voucher, you simply just need to um, email John Perry and he'll put his information in the chat, but that's jperry at detroitpow.org. And uh, he will, um, I'm sorry, not John Perry, it's um, uh, Janae, Janae um, Gordon. So jgordon at detroitpow.org is um, the email for that. And we'll make sure that you get the information on how to redeem your voucher. You'll just come down to PAL. We'll tell you when, at what time. And um, really cool um, uh, thing that the Pistons do to give back in, to the community. So we're, we're glad to partner with them. And we're thankful to have all of you and look forward to seeing you again next week, same time, Tuesday, 8 p 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time um, for our next discussion on fact versus fiction. Uh, what are the laws that exist in um, the community? How does it uh, impact youth? And um, we want to get your ideas on what you think is right and what you think is wrong. So thank you again. And um, this is the end of Critical Conversations. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, we, we like to reward those who participate the most. So we're looking for your participation. And again, tell a friend. You can absolutely tell a friend. They missed this session, that's okay. You can invite them in, share the link with them uh, for the email or whatever it is that you need to do. But we want as many youth as we can uh, joining us each week. So again, see everybody later. Give me some fingers and we will see you next week. Peace. Right. Take it okay. easy, everybody. Take it easy. Bye. Have fun. <laughs>